Now, we're going to join a gentleman, Paul Einerson, who's the COO and chairman of Geophysical Service Incorporated, calling from Calgary, I understand. Paul, you're on the air. Good morning to you. Good morning, Bill. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent, thank you. What time is it in Calgary as we speak? Early, isn't it? It's 7.35. Okay, you're up and at it. I'm sure you're up by 5 or 6 o'clock every morning in your business in any event. It's uh, it's a long day. Yeah, for sure. Now, uh, what's on your mind this morning, Paul? You're with the Geophysical Service Incorporated. What is that, by the way? We're a uh, seismic company, and uh, we're the largest owner of seismic data offshore Canada. Offshore. Do you do any onshore yeah. stuff? Uh, fracking onshore, for example? No, no fracking. We're not on the drilling side. What we do is we image the subsurface of the earth so basically it's a sonogram of the earth right so that you can see all the layers below and without having to cut it open and do you that. do that offshore do you our focus is offshore we used to do onshore work as well but our main focus has been offshore for the last 40 so years are you out here off the coast of newfoundland and labrador seeing what lies under the sea and under the uh, earth under the sea? Is that, are you doing that as we speak, or have you done it in the past? We have in the past. Uh, we're no longer uh, working in Newfoundland. We, uh, uh, the original data over many of the famous discoveries that everybody knows about, like Sable Island and Hibernia and, and, and things like that, yeah. uh, we acquired that data and uh, all the way back starting in the late 60s. Gosh, I hope they paid you well for that. I mean, that, those were magnificent discoveries. Uh, whether it's a discovery or not, you get paid the same thing. We're, we're just, uh, we're kind of like a software company. We, yeah. we license the information right. to multiple users. Yeah, well, it's valuable information, to say the very least. And what's on your mind this morning, Mr. Einerson? What, what's, what's up? Well, we've got, uh, if you've been watching the news, we've got quite a few uh, issues going. Uh, yesterday we were in the news regarding the uh, bill and the information commissioner uh, suing to get it removed so that the information commissioner has access to what they call secret government documents, which turned out to be uh, not secreted at all. Uh, I see. Uh, you, you're you're talking about uh, Ed Ring here in this province going to court to get access to certain government information. That's correct. And how we're, do you fit into that? Well, we're having uh, an even worse problem than him. Uh, so, so we side with uh, Mr. Ring completely, and we can sympathize with his frustration, and uh, and so forth. We're actually in court. Uh, with Nalcor on two access to information issues. So you're looking for public information that the government or Crown Corporation <laughs> refuses to disclose to you? Is that the idea? Well, it's even worse. It's actually our own information. Uh, one of them, we asked the Nalcor if they've ever had access or possession of our seismic data, and they just refused to answer. They won't even answer, let alone give you access to the information. They refuse to let it to tell you if they even have the information. That's correct. They they refuse to even acknowledge that that it may exist. And how is it that you need access to information they have, which you say is your information? Don't you already have that in your possession? Uh, no, we don't. What we're trying to do is find out if Nalcor has had unauthorized access and possession because they don't have a license agreement from us and we're simply trying to ask the question do you have it and we, we, we've quite frankly never had anybody just blatantly ignore re refuse to answer us like this Mr. Einerson how would they have come about where would they have gotten this information that you are in the dark about and don't even know if they have how would they have have gotten that without your knowledge information that you you own and that you have produced well there's there's several possible ways uh, we're concerned that maybe they got it through the offshore petroleum board the cnl opb or potentially from uh the department of natural resources 
Right. Both have uh, access to this information. Uh, another source would be from the oil companies that Nalcor has uh, farmed in with, and they have interest in these offshore blocks like Hibernia and, and so forth. And uh, we're, we're concerned that in those agreements with those companies that it provides them access to our data, which is uh, uh, contravenes our license agreement terms, just like software. Yeah. Although you have a copy of some software, you're not allowed to go and give it out to 15 of your friends. So I'm, I'm an author myself, and I have a, a copyright to the material that I produce between covers and uh, get royalties for it and so on. And I would be very, very perturbed if somebody else was using that without my permission and making money from it. Is this the, or making, or gaining an advantage? to themselves and not to me as a result of my creative efforts. Is, are you in the same category as that? Is that what you're saying? That's exactly it. And, and that's maybe a good segue to the next piece that uh, right. I, wanna, I would like to explain to you. Okay. What, what we've had happen with the Offshore Petroleum Board, well, but let me finish first with Nelcor. The yeah. second access to information request we made to them uh, that we're also in court appealing is very egregious. Uh, we asked for a bunch of information where Nalcor was uh, funding our foreign competitors with taxpayer money to compete against us, a Canadian company, mm -hmm. where they partnered to own data and place data over top of ours, which I'm very concerned that they have access to our data and then use that to place the new data. So you can imagine the conflicts of interest and competitive issues there. Okay. So we asked for that. They they wrote us a letter back and asked us information. So we asked for that in about June of 2011. Mm -hmm. They said, yeah, we have 6,200 pages and it'll cost you about $6,000. To access send us it. Half, send us half the money. Yes. So we sent them about $3,000. They sent us a letter back and said, thank you, we have your fee and you will be receiving this information in about November of 2011. And? In about, in about a month's time. Right. And we hear nothing. And all the way in December of 2012, 13 months later, we get a little package that has a 17-page PowerPoint in it. And the PowerPoint is reproduced twice, so it's 34 pages. And there's no explanation for what happened to the other 6,200 pages yeah. that they quoted us. No explanation for why we had to pay $3,000 for 17 pages. No explanation for the delay of 13 months. And no explanation why 99% of our request wasn't followed, wasn't replied to. Okay, we're rapidly running out of time here. I have to... Uh did I understand you correctly in saying that this is the first time you've ever been confronted with this kind of behavior by a government or a crown corporation of a government? Is this unique in your experience? This, we have done this across Canada, access to information, and we have never run into yeah. the abuse like we've seen here. And one final question on this in this area. You've gone to court. Did you, you mentioned you were appealing. Has the court already found... Uh, decided on uh, your, your case uh, and found against you or for you and an appeal is taking place or what's the status of that? Well, yeah, when when you get a refusal, you can appeal it and that is in process now. So this is a, a you've gone to court. You haven't lost the case in court. You're merely going to court to get your rights enforced at this point. That's correct. Okay, now look, I've got to say to you, uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time. We have obligations here. You were going to move on to the CNLOPB, can I pre in, uh, prevail upon you to give us a call perhaps on Monday or Tuesday or uh, at your convenience next week to continue this discussion, Paul? You're giving us a lot of information and we have severely limited time here, unfortunately. Yeah, I think you'll be very interested. It's basically the Napster model versus the iTunes model. Okay. Using music as an analogy, okay. Well, you'll be quite interested. Will you do that next week? Because you give us a lot to digest now. It's very interesting. A lot of people are hearing it more or less for the first time, and doesn't cast Nalcor in a very good light. 
and now we're going to hit the CNLOPB, uh, which has also uh, come under its praise and criticism in days gone by, and we'd like to hear what your problems with them might be. So give us a dingle next week, if you would, sir. I will. Thank you, Paul. Th thank you. And thanks for calling today. Very interesting uh, resume, what's happening. Have a good day.